Good morning, everyone, and uh, happy Easter. Uh, to all those of the Gateway family, I want to say welcome. And to those who may not be a part of the Gateway family, whether you're tuning in for the first time or uh, have been following along with us the last couple weeks, I just want to say thank you for joining with us. And uh, we pray that, uh, that you've been blessed and you will be blessed today uh, by this service. Um, uh, it's been a great week. A um, lot going on, a lot of videos being posted, and I want to give a, a huge, huge shout out to Seth and Jeremy and Jared and Mixon for all the content that's been going out. Um, it's been great, um, been very uplifting in a way that we can uh, all stay connected together in this time uh, through God's Word. And so um, there's a lot going on today. It's going to be an awesome day. Uh, we have a great worship plan for you. Uh, we also, if you stay tuned after this, we have an awesome virtual Easter egg hunt for the kiddos or you adults if you want to participate too. And uh, so stick around for that. It's going to be awesome. Um, I'm going to say a quick prayer and then we have a little video that we're going to show and then we'll dive right into singing and worship together. This video, if you'll, if you'll follow along with it, it's got some great words that kind of set the tone for today, um, not only with it being Easter and the Lord's Day, but also just with the times and what's going on right now. So, if you will, please stand. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. Had to, had to do that. But if, um, if you'll bow with me in prayer, um, I'll, I'll pray us out, and then we will continue on with our worship. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for uh, just an awesome day that we can wake up and know, Lord, that uh, that that you are risen that you are alive and that we uh, have the victory through you. We pray, Lord, that we can share that victory with, with the whole world, everyone we come in contact with. Be with us today as we worship you. Help this message to, uh, to spread throughout the, the whole world. And uh, we pray, Lord, that we will continue to uh, put our hope and faith and trust in you every day. And uh, we're just so thankful again for the risen Savior. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Take a look at this video. Hear the holy roar of God resound. Hear the holy roar of God resound. Watch the waters part before us now. Watch the waters part before us now. Come and see what he has done for us. Tell the world of his great love. Our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who Says, let God arise, let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Arise, let God arise. Our God. Reigns 
enemies will run for sure. His enemies will run for sure. The church will stand, she will endure. The church will stand, she will endure. He holds the keys of life, our Lord. Death has no sting, no final word. Our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who
<laughs> we happy Easter. We love you, church family. Hi, Gateway. I just want you all to know that I really miss you. I'm Polly Schrader. And just take a good look because at the end of 30 days, I may not look the same, but I'm still the same short, round, gray-haired lady. Have a good week. Love all of you. This is Dr. David Chandler coming to you from Isolation Station Zebra. Wishing you a happy Easter for all of Gateway. Stay home. Stay safe. Wash your hands like crazy. Wear a mask and don't touch your face. Happy Easter. Hello, Gateway family. We are the Pelletiers, and we are wishing you a happy Easter, and we love and miss you all. Miss you guys. Hi. Hello. Happy Easter from uh, Jerry and Naomi Penny. We love you, Gateway family. Look forward to seeing you very soon. Be sure and wash your hands. Stay safe. Hey, Gateway, this is the Hancocks. We thought we'd just give you a shout out, let you see what's happening here. Can somebody send me Benny's number? We're going to need it stat. Hey, Gateway, it's the Hancocks. We want to give everybody a shout-out during these very strange days and let you guys know that... Gonna need counseling when this is all over. Does anybody have Benny's number? Hi. Hi everybody. This is a Penny's on the way to pick some strawberries at a strawberry patch. Social distancing. We just want to say um, that we miss everybody and happy Easter. We love you guys. Good morning, Gateway. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Happy Easter. Good morning, Gateway. Happy Easter from the Clark family, or he is risen. Chloe. Chloe, we're not the Clark family. Well, in Jeremy's email, it tells us to say, Happy Easter from the Clark family, or he is risen. But that's just an example. I don't care. Well, in that case, Happy Easter from Sarah Clark, Kirsten Clark, Lucy Clark, Chloe Clark. Happy Easter from our family to your family. We're also the Smiths. <laughs> Happy Easter, Gateway! The Hee Hee is family, we miss you, Gateway. Happy Easter, Gateway! From the Howell family. Hey, hey Gateway. Gateway! This is Jordan and family. We wanted to check in on y'all and make sure y'all are doing well and staying safe. We love y'all. Have a great Bye. day. Bye! Bye! Bye. Good Easter morning from Scott and Kay Watson. We we'll miss you guys and looking forward to where we can see everyone again. Have a great Easter. Hey Gateway, I love seeing your faces in those videos. Um, you can keep sending those in. I actually put all that together and it's, it's a sweet moment during the week to kind of compile all of that and to to see everyone excited and happy and uh, it's it's a neat thing so if you want to keep sending those in to Jeremy please do that as long as we're doing this we want to see you guys we want to uh, we want to hear how you're doing uh, and and everything like that so happy Easter he is risen he is risen indeed I am thrilled because we finally got Ryan here uh, as many of y'all have noted for weeks we have really really missed Ryan uh, at being in front of us, so I'm super duper thrilled that he is here, uh, getting to see him. I get to see him a little bit during the week, but uh, to hear him, the only thing that we've got to work out 
is a way to get him to lead the worship that we're doing. We're so blessed by Zoe. We're so blessed by praise and harmony and all of that. But uh, I think we all, I think I speak for all of us when I say that we're missing some of that Ryan Myers and Gateway Praise Team worship. So, man, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Appreciate it, man. It's yeah. good to be here. Um, as comfortable as my recliner is at home, right. I am glad to be here with y'all. I yeah. miss the not only the fellowship with the whole family, but just the camaraderie we yeah. have between ministers and and hanging out with you guys. Um, as as much as the requests have come in for me to just stand on on the camera and lead the worship by myself, uh, that's probably not going to happen. It's a little nerve wracking here. It is. It, it, it is. Uh, we'll just get that out of the way. Talking to a camera. Is, is a lot more nerve-wracking than talking to 400 people. Right. So yeah. I'll take you guys over this camera any day. But um, yeah, and gathering my thoughts for today and, and how to kind of lead us into uh, worship, uh, my mind uh, went to, um, actually, believe it or not, my father-in-law. So um, if you spend time around my father-in-law and you get to talking about movies, um, if there's ever a movie that you want to see, that he has already seen, don't start talking about it because he will tell you yeah. the beginning, middle, and end, the plot, turn, the, every, the climax, everything. And uh, he will ruin that movie for you. If you're watching a movie with him and he's seen it, same thing. Yep. He will straight up just tell you that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's son yeah. or whatever movie you're, you're watching. So, um, so with that being said, uh, obviously we know um, us as Christians – we kind of know the end of our story, and that is that Christ is, in fact, risen. Yeah. Uh, I want to uh, read just a simple verse uh, from Mark. Mark chapter 16, it starts in verse 4. It says, In looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back, and it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Can you imagine trying to be a Christian today and not knowing the end of that story? Mm -hmm. Trying to live out your life hoping, oh man, I hope that Christ rises from the dead well we don't have to live with that type of fear or unknown we know that Christ in fact rose from the dead um, we know the outcome uh, the beauty of the gospel is that we know that death was defeated that Jesus is the victor and that we can take part in that victory Amen. and um, you may be thinking today okay Ryan that's great that sounds beautiful uh, that's a beautiful story, but what about the here and now? Yep. You know, um, we're, we're here on this earth. We go through the many struggles that we go through, whether it's this struggle that's going on right now with the pandemic or whether it's something completely unrelated. We all have our struggles, and you may be thinking, what about that? Uh, I have to live through that in order to get to this victory. Well, uh, I have to admit, I, I, I took this from uh, something that Greg Folk sent out yesterday, and it really, um, it really touched on that idea of the fact that what about the here and now? And it's, um, it's a writing from a prominent uh, Christian author, and it's entitled The Silence of Saturday. So I'm going to read that for you real quick. Jesus is silent on Saturday. The women have anointed his body and placed it in Joseph's tomb. The cadaver of Christ is as mute as the stone which guards it. He spoke much on Friday. He will liberate the slaves of death on Sunday. But on Saturday, Jesus is silent. And so is God. He made himself heard on Friday. He tore the curtains of the temple, opened the graves of the dead, rocked the earth, blocked the sun of the sky, and sacrificed the Son of Heaven. Earth heard much of God on Friday. But nothing on Saturday. Jesus is silent. God is silent. Saturday is silent. Easter weekend discussions tend to skip Saturday. Friday and Sunday get the press. The crucifixion and resurrection command our thoughts. But don't ignore Saturday. You have them too. Silent Saturdays, the day between the struggle and the solution. 
the question and the answer, the offered prayer and the answer thereof. Saturday's silence torment us. Is God angry? Did I disappoint him? God knows Jesus is in the tomb. Why doesn't he do something? Or in your case, God knows your career is in the tank. Your finances are in the pit. Your marriage is in a mess. Why doesn't he act? What are you supposed to do until he does? You do what Jesus did. You lie still. Stay silent. Trust God. Jesus died with this conviction. You will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. Jesus knew God would not leave him alone in the grave. You need to know God will not leave you alone with your struggles. His silence is not his absence. Inactivity is never apathy. Saturdays have their purpose. They let us feel the force of God's strength. Had God raised Jesus 15 minutes after the death of his son, would we have appreciated the act? Were he to solve your problems the second they appear, would you appreciate his strength? For his reasons, God inserts a Saturday between our Fridays and our Sundays. If today is one for you, be patient. As one who endured the silent Saturday wrote, Be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Just as the video stated earlier that we watched, though the future is uncertain, though everything around you is changing and seems to be crumbling, there is one thing that remains unchanged, and that is the power of God, the fact that he has risen, and the fact that he does not change. I want to leave you with this, Psalms 30, verse 5, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. I just want to leave you with that thought this morning as we continue worshiping and celebrating our risen Savior, that though you may be going through this night, this tear, tearful time, there's joy in the morning. Just hang on. Let's continue worshiping together. I believe in the sun. I believe in the risen one. I believe I overcome by the power of his blood. Amen. Amen. I'm alive. I'm alive because he Because he lives. Because he lives. Because he lives.
Hey, Gateway, uh, now's our time that we, we want to do communion. We want to take uh, part in the Lord's Supper. So if you want to go and grab uh, if, uh, the elements, if you have them, however you have those. Uh, I know normally that, that's been happening at the end of the lesson, but because of what we have going on and because it's special, we want you to go on and, and partake of that now. And, you know, communion, I, I've got to say, we're in week four of doing this, and it's, it's hitting a little differently. Um, cause communion is about community. It's about being together and enjoying this meal. Uh, the body broken and the blood shed is, is our salvation. And it's this beautiful reality. But, and while it's horizontal, but excuse me, perpendicular with God, it's horizontal with our brothers and sisters. And so while there's been a great beauty in being able to take communion at home and worshiping at home and, and bolstering that there's, there's been a great sadness about communion over these last several weeks for me personally but the thing is is I think that that's okay I don't think that I, I if we think of every single Lord's Supper if we think of every communion in the history of the world from the moment that it was instituted surely there were some somber ones and some sad ones right I think of the very first one where Jesus says I'm gonna go and die and someone's gonna betray me and how challenging that must have been I think of the road to Emmaus, that, that, that post-resurrection time where it was in the breaking of the bread where they saw Jesus. But up until that point, they were heartbroken because they thought that he was going to be the one that saved them. I think of communions taken in the first and second century where when they got together for this agape feast, perhaps one or two of their brothers had been murdered by the state. As Jeremy covered in, in one of his, his videos with the artwork, they did Lord's Supper after their brothers and sisters were mauled by lions. They did the Lord's Supper after their brothers and sisters were continued to be crucified and lit on fire by the, by the powers that be. They still did communion. They still did the Lord's Supper. They still got together. And so I have to think, I have to truly believe that in the history of the Lord's Supper, of the Eucharist, there had to be some pretty sad ones. There had to be some pretty somber ones, and there had to be some joyous and amazing ones too. I can tell you this, today's communion is somber. I miss, I miss you guys. I'm staring at a camera. I miss seeing faces. Uh, I miss, I miss the, 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 the shift of the chairs and the rustling of the clothes as we're all sitting together. I miss the, 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 the singing together and, and the, the, the moments that everything messes up when the technology is weird and, and it doesn't work and we're running around trying to figure, I just miss all of that. I miss the humanity of being together. But that's okay. Because God is still so incredibly present. He is still so real. And today on Easter Sunday, we celebrate that realness in a way with the resurrection that is so impactful. So however, if today is a joyous communion for you, amen. But if it's a somber one, that's okay. But I also want to say this. When we get together again, and I don't know what the new rules are going to be on hugging and handshaking, but let's just assume that when we get together, we can hug and handshake. If you are sitting next to me when we take communion, I know sometimes we're quiet, you better be expecting a hug from me. If, if you're in my general area that first Sunday back, I don't care if everybody is dead silent and you can hear a pin drop, you're going to get hugged by me. Because that's what this is all about. It's our relationship with God, what he's done for us through Jesus, and our relationship with each other. So I'm going to pray over both of them as we commune together. Father, we love you, and we are so moved by you, and we are so amazed by you, Father, and we are in awe of all that you have done since the beginning of time. But God, we are so moved by the cross because it, it is it's salvation and it's victory over sin and Satan, Father. And, and we are so moved by the resurrection because it is the power within us. And when we go out tomorrow on Monday, we are a people of the resurrection. The tomb is empty. We have that hope. We have that power, Father. That is what we have inside of us. The same power that raised your son from the dead, Father, is inside of us. 
And God, so let this Lord's Supper today be that reminder that that is the truth that we live in right now. And when we take that bread that sustains us, that represents his body, and when we drink that cup, Father, which is his blood shed for us so we can be reconciled to you, sanctified, glorified, Father, all so we can be transformed. Let us never forget that moment, Father. And God, let us look If we're sad, longingly towards a time when we're going to be together again and we're going to be able to hug each other and we're going to be able to to grab each other, Father, and say, this is the body broken for us. This is the blood shed for us. And together, we're going to be Jesus people. All of this, Father, in your name. All of this in your Son's holy name who died on the cross for all of us and was resurrected anew. Amen. Let's take in the communion. Now break the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the dark Good and bad.
Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who was Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the, the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started running for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter each and, and reached the tomb first. He stopped to look and saw Lynn Raps lying there. But he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and he went inside. He also noticed the limb wraps lying there. While the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up, lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For until then, they, had, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb, crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white robes, they have taken my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She, she turned to leave and saw someone standing there, so Jesus, but she didn't look at him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought, she thought he was the gardener. Sir, he said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go again. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to my father. But I go to find my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father and my and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord, she said. Get, she said, she, then she said, give gave them his message. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. <laughs> They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I will believe it unless I see the nail wound in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hands in the wound inside. Eight days later, the disciples went together again. And this time, Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into, into the wound in my hand, in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. The disciples saw Jesus do 
many other miraculous signs in addition to the one recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and those who believe in him will have life in the power of his name. Well, welcome. If you want to uh, turn in your Bibles to start today, uh, you, we're going to actually start with Psalm 22. But before we get started, I needed to point out, um, Ryan told me, make sure you know that I really know that he knows that Darth Vader is Luke's father and not Luke's son. He was just testing you to make sure you were paying close attention. So, so good on you, Ryan. We got it. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the beginning to your Easter day. Mine began super early. I uh, got up around 4.45 this morning, got here at 5.30, knocked out some stuff, went home. Uh, the Easter Bunny had visited, so we had our Easter time, and then we, I zipped back so, it, so we could get here in time for prayer and, and beginning uh, the week. And I, I really, from the bottom of my heart, want to say thank you to all of our support staff, uh, Jennifer, Seth, Mixon, Ryan, um, Jared, um, Randy, uh, Kelly, for all of the help that's gone into the preparation for this Easter week. I know we've been sending out tons of content. As a matter of fact, from the beginning of Facebook Live, we have now over 12 hours of content available on Right Now Media. If you go, if you've downloaded the Right Now Media app or you're broadcasting it to your TV, go to the Gateway Church of Christ page and you can see all of that media. You can re-watch things and uh, and I'm, I'm so excited. I'm going to say it as a reminder at the, at the uh, end, but also we've got a special, special Easter egg hunt that is coming on immediately following this worship service and it is a lot of fun. We're probably more excited about that than anything else. <laughs> it kind of uh, reign reignited the little kids and all of us. So um, make sure if you've got kids, it's going to be a fun time for them. Uh, I think that's around 1130. That's going to go live. So make sure you stay tuned. So I've entitled today's sermon, The Dangerous Game. And um, I was specific with that title because of an experience that I had recently uh, when I was out of the country in Israel. And and I wanted to make it part of the Easter message. As a matter of fact, it meant so much to me there that I knew immediately that was going to be my Easter message. But there's a, um, a, a psalm, Psalm 22, that is seen by most scholars, well, by anybody that reads the Bible really, as a prophetic psalm. A lot of the psalms are, are prophetic, but this psalm was very specific about Jesus, about a specific event that was going to happen that we're going to reference in a minute. But it was Psalm 22, beginning in verse 16 and reading to 18. It says, Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men have encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Think about that. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. Think about that. And now watch this. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. Yeah, you know. You know the story. The story takes place in the New Testament with Jesus when at uh, Pilate's place of judgment, um, Jesus is judged and the guards, the Roman centurions, uh, they gamble, they throw, throw dice over, over Jesus's. Uh, clothing and, and, and make a mockery of it. We've read it for years. Matthew 27 um, is where that passage comes from, verses um, 27 through 31. So let's go there real quick. Matthew 27, 27 through 31. And it reads, Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. So a whole company. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. 
After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. It's a very familiar passage. As a matter of fact, a lot of uh, movies have been uh, remade about Jesus. And, and this next scene that you'll see right here shows um, them gambling over Jesus' clothes. And, and, and it's a familiar scene. We even see it in, in art, in children's literature. This is one thing we've talked about. But the next slide I want to show you was actually taken where Pilate um, put Jesus on trial. And it is at the, in the basement of this convent in Jerusalem. And um, you'll see there a little drawing. It's, uh, it's like a square in nature or like a diamond. And it's got little notches that are in it. And um, it's called the Game of the Kings and, um, or the King's Game. And it's not only there. When we visited Capernaum, um, the game was also right there outside of the old remnants of the Jewish synagogue. And so when archaeologists began to uncover all this, they began to see all of these familiar-looking um, diagrams that had been chiseled into uh, the rock, the limestone, and marble. And so you look at this, and I want you to think of it as a, a rudimentary board game. I mean, if you can imagine a board game, we've all played board games where you have a little piece or a lot of pieces, like the game Sorry or something like that, and you have to move the pieces through. Well, this is something that they just didn't do on Jesus. As a matter of fact, it was a way for the Romans to humiliate anyone who had been condemned. And so they basically um, made the person who was guilty a figurine in the game. They all carried figurines of their little gods anyways, and they would move the gods from place to place, and they would win clothing. But Jesus's was different. Uh, it was also not the first time that they had mocked someone with fake royalty by giving him a scepter or a crown of thorns or different things like that. But, but it was very unique to Jesus's situation because, remember, Jesus had said of himself as well as others said about him that he was the king of kings. He was the king of the Jews. Matter of fact, that's what the inscription would read above his head on the makeshift sign that they made. And so if you think about it, the son of man, the son of God, was made into a board game. They mocked him to the point where they said, we hear your claims, but this is the way we view you. And so they gambled with his life. And they gambled with his clothes. And they turned Jesus Christ into a very native and primitive board game. It was very surreal to see it in Capernaum, but when we got to Jerusalem and saw it there, right underneath uh, where, where uh, Pilate's house would have been, it was more insulting. To think that I could literally be standing right there where they judged Jesus and Jesus was was beaten and scorned and mocked was a very humbling thing. But I want you to think about this. In the book of Luke, after Jesus' crucifixion, there's a time, a period, where it's known usually as Silent Saturday. And it's now Sunday. We haven't heard from Jesus or God or anybody for 24 hours. And now the Jews are gathered together. But where are the Jews? Where are the disciples? What have they been doing in the meantime? Well, we know what Judas was up to. He was up to taking his own life for the guilt and shame that he had brought on himself by selling Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. But I love this, this writing. I want to read it to you real quick. It's short. It says, filled with doubt. That is what the disciples were thinking when Jesus was crucified. He did not fulfill the prophecies. They thought that the power of God had been revealed to them. They thought that he had died and maybe the Jewish authorities were right. Their tradition revealed him to be a heretic and a liar. This man that they had dedicated themselves to was a liar. Everything that they believed was a lie. In Jesus of Nazareth, they believed that the prophecies had failed. The disciples were full of doubt in the very cause, 
and the very man whom they had committed their lives to. A lot of times Peter gets a bad rep because Jesus told him he was going to deny him three times, and he did, but all of the disciples were in doubt. All of Jesus' followers were confused. They could not understand what had happened. I mean, this was the guy that was supposed to remove the Roman persecution and occupation and begin to rule the world from the centrality of Jerusalem, the world as they knew it, as far as that stretched. What's amazing is that they had themselves begun or, or been guilty of turning Jesus into a game. I want to read uh, Matt, uh, Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 13 to 49, and I want you to read it with me. Now that day, now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked among them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk alone? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and don't know the things that have happened in these, in these last, last days? What things, he asked. Jesus asked, which reveals the humanity of Jesus. Almost in a silly way, Jesus, very well knowing that he could have said, yeah, I know, because I was the guy, says, what things? Tell me about them. Well, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet. He was a prophet. It wasn't that he was the son of God. It wasn't that he was the chosen one. Now he's been downgraded to a prophet. Powerful in word and deed before God and all the people, the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped, we had hoped in the past tense that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. In other words, yeah, and then this crazy thing happened. They went to the tomb and he wasn't there. I mean, I mean, there are women after all. And I mean, back then, women's word was not something you banked on, unfortunately. Then verse 25, Jesus said to them, How foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us. It's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven. Where had they been? In hiding. And those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Jesus wasn't far away. He was again in a very real teaching moment where he could come before his disciples and say, no, no, here I am. But what's more important is the first thing he says to his disciples is, shalom, peace be with you. It's the traditional Jewish Hebrew greeting, shalom. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why did doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands, look at my feet. It is I, myself. Touch and see, 
A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. They were guilty of thinking of Jesus as a pawn on a chessboard or a game of the king. Could it be possible that sometimes, as great as the news is about the resurrection of Jesus, we too are guilty of playing a game with our faith? Trying to use things such as willpower to make it through the day. I won't sin, I won't sin, I won't sin. The only thing that does is bring glory to us, ourselves, when we've made it through a day where we've sinned little or none at all. Look what I did in my own power. We empty the cross of its power because we fail to give Jesus the glory that he is due because of the sacrifice that he made for us. How foolish are we? Sometimes, I, it was funny, when I got here this morning, Ryan walked around the corner and said to me, He is risen. And I said, he is risen indeed. And then we both kind of giggled because that's a very customary greeting that we have. But sometimes it feels silly when you say it. Why would it feel silly? Well, perhaps because of the awkwardness of the moment, being vulnerable, man to man. We got macho. We got we to gotta protect some of our integrity. And we've got we've to not be vulnerable with each other. And we, we, we definitely don't need to be spiritual. We can joke, joke about it and laugh it off. Oh man, I think Jesus looked at his disciples and said over and over and over, do you not understand how big these moments are? Peace be with you. Guys, the resurrection is more than just a story. It actually happened. It actually occurred. Not long after this moment, Jesus goes to uh, the, the top of the Mount of Olives where he is there and he ascends the Bible says he was taken up into the heavens to be at the right hand of the Father. He had promised them by giving them this great commission that the Holy Spirit was coming and would indwell them. How often are we filled with the Holy Spirit, but we find ourselves taking more glory for ourselves because of our beliefs and our faith and our, our, our belonging to an organized church? Oh, oh, we belong, all right, and you belong, but we belong to a kingdom that worships a risen Savior. Let that sink in for a minute. You go to the nearest funeral home, right? I'm the son of a mortician. Part of the jokes that we used to pull were inviting our friends to the funeral home and where we would lie on the table. Don't tell anybody this. And then when somebody would come in, with the sheet covered and a toe tag on, we would sit up. Back then, my abs were good enough to where I could do that without grunting. It would terrify people. Why? Because <laughs> dead people don't sit up, regardless of what the myths are. They don't sit up. And if one does, you take notice. You probably even have to change your shorts. But I want you to think about it. Jesus rose out of the grave. And the fact that he did makes everything wonderful. It means that he was indeed the sacrificial lamb that gave us the freedom of our sin and the ability to walk from this life into eternal life with him. Usually it's customary that we have, a, um, that we have a, an invitation and an invitation song, and I stand at the front awkwardly. And uh, we've been, you know, wrestling with it because we don't really have an invitation time while we're virtual and uh, are live on Facebook. But I want to thank Kai Penny for responding early to this week's invitation. Enjoy this video. Hi, uh, my sweethearted, wonderful angel of a daughter. I've been thinking for quite some time, I think, about uh, completely dedicating her life to Christ. So this afternoon, I was talking with Amy and I. She has decided she wants to go ahead and be baptized. And I uh, wanted to share this moment with her friends and loved ones. So I know she's glad that you're all here. So, Kaya, I'll ask you before I, I baptize you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Christ? 
and is your Lord and Savior and has sent forth to die for you so that you might have salvation. I have based on your confession and belief in you as I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Forgiveness of your sins. Gateway, so I'm here with Mike, uh, Mike Snow, and uh, who is one of our elders, and Mike has really been, out of all the elders, he is one that has taken the most lead in, in working with the building project, and today we have some very exciting things to talk about. Wanted to give you an update, uh, but before we get into the details, Mike, have you guys been coping with the virus? Oh, wonderfully. <laughs> yeah, well, we're staying home pretty much, uh, staying inside except for morning walks. And uh, of course, Brenda likes to get out into her gardening work in the yard. Uh, we make limited trips. We don't. We only go out once a week, uh, and only one of us goes into the store. Yeah. Uh, we also uh, read a lot. I'm I'm into God's Word in ways that I've never been before, and I'm doing a lot of, uh, of course, coordination of documents associated with the project. Uh, we phone members a lot. We uh, phone the owner's representative, Amir, every day and chat with him and, and the builder. And then we close the day with praying together Yeah, in, in bed. Good deal, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Um, well, bring us up to speed. Uh, where we are in the project, what's going on? Okay, well, the site and building permits, those are the, the big bugaboo that's been holding us up for so long because these are bureaucratic processes and there's nothing we can do to move them along, but we're finally getting to the point where we're ready to proceed now. Uh, the, um, 
the house at 630 is at 630 Burgess is demolished as you know yeah you might be able to actually hear in the background some beeping that's them clearing the last of the rubble big pile <laughs> of rubbish a big deal is that we got this what's called the guaranteed maximum price from the builder last week and that means that there's he cannot exceed that price so that gives us a basis for contracting with him and it's really a key to proceeding further. Now that we have that, we can go further. In fact, we're fi finalizing the division of responsibility between ourselves and the builder, and we're also getting very close to executing the contract with him, such that site work will pr probably begin uh, in no more than two weeks. That's exciting. What uh, I mean, It makes me excited. What kind of things are, are exciting to you about the process? Well, initially... Uh, we found, we found the builder to be very conservative in his estimates of cost and schedule. And uh, we, we, for a while, were actually afraid that we wouldn't be able to build the gym because right. we, we didn't think we'd have enough funds, despite the generosity of that, uh, of that gift that God gave us. Right. But now that we've gotten into, the, into this point, this, this part of the, the, of the negotiation, uh, we actually find that costs have been lowered enough by us and by the builder and through value engineering that the gym is now a certainty. So you, you hear that, teens? The, the gym is now a complete reality. We're excited about that. And not only that, but the balance of the building is going to be very inviting yeah. and multifunctional, and it's going to have furnishings which will support many possibilities, uh, getting the community and our discipleship both benefiting at the same time. Sure, so sure. That that's the most exciting thing that's happened in a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while. It, it's it's crazy. I, Jennifer and I were talking about last night. We it just seems like yesterday this rolled out, but it also seems eons ago that it all started. Right. Um, so it's we're excited that it's it's moving forward quickly. It's amazing. What uh, what are some of the things the congregation can be specifically praying over right now about the new building? Well, for sure, we we need the congregation to pray about identifying and and suggesting to us opportunities uh, for services to others, which which will be using this this new facility. We want to pray that the outside construction projects are continued to be allowed to be pursued uh, as. Uh, essential activities, as the governor's guidance says. Uh, we want to pray that there is no interruption, like a hurricane or any other Amen. malady, that, that on top of this, so that we can get ourselves finished in a year or so. And then finally, we want to we want to ask the congregation to give a prayer for all the cooperation and lack of dissent that we've observed as we've gone forward yeah. in this, the trust that they've given us. And we ask that they will help us uh, to continue in that vein as we proceed to seek God's will for this project. That's that's a biggie. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, you know, if you remember correctly, Seth did a, a prayer for us, wrote out a long prayer for us for a while to be praying over that. And I've got to say, admit, I'm, I'm guilty of praying it for a while and then kind of neglecting it. Um, so to hear those specifics is pretty exciting. Um, final question. Do you have a personal vision for the gateway of the future? Well, I, I really, I guess I'd put it this way. Um, God has blessed us with a very rich gift. And he gives us the opportunity uh, and the means to realign the use of our facility that we wouldn't oh, yeah. have had before. Yeah. Uh, rather than only occupying that facility, the new facility, for a while on Sundays, we should use that facility for real-time uh, uh, service to the community and discipline, discipleship of our own such that it's used almost full-time as a basis for our pursuit of our mission. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. that's what I'm really hoping for is that we go forth with what we have, which is very generous and which is very going to be very... Uh, competent and and something that we can use in many different ways and go for it and do that yeah yeah i love it i mean gateway has always been the type of church that has launched forward and really pioneered uh, mission uh in the community and mission in the world and we just we really want to continue that 
Man, I applaud you. Great job with all that you've done. You've been phenomenal. It's been Thank fun working with you. Thank you, you brother. Uh, yeah, Elmo, Miss <laughs> COVID. All right. Hey, Gateway. So it is that time in our service where uh, we wanted to remind you about our offering. This is our time uh, as Christians to, to give back uh, from what God's given us. So um, on the screen, you should have the four ways to text. You'll have uh, the text to give feature, which is 850-800-9123. Just uh, text that number and it will begin prompting you back with some things to do, or you can, as always, snail mail it to PO Box 11247, if that's the way you want to send in your check. Um, Elexio app, you can give through there, or you can go on the website, gatewaycoc.org, and you can click on give, and it will lead you through those steps. Let's pray real quick um, before Mike closes us out in prayer, and then I come back with uh, a couple more announcements. Father, thank you for this time we have to, uh, to give back. We thank you, God, for this opportunity and help us, God, to give joyfully from our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, Gateway, a wonderful Easter service. We thank you for joining us, and we hope that you'll continue to watch us as we go through this exodus of ours. Please join me in prayer now as we close the service. Our Heavenly Father, on this, the most glorious day of the year, the strength of our rejoicing at your resurrection plan is here for all the world to see. We do sorely miss the happiness which we derive from the real world, the non-virtual intimacy which we are used to. We long to share with one another in an upfront and personal way the spiritual message of the day and the physical tokens of the day. While we are in the midst of an uncomfortable change, we know that this too will pass. Help us, Father, to focus on the positive, our health, our love for you and for one another, and our trust that you and your spirit will anoint us with your comfort and grace as we go forward. In the coming week, embolden us to glorify you, to imitate Christ, and to make him known. And it's through him we pray. Amen. All right, Gateway, we thank you for joining us today. Um, I wanted to close with two, uh, two things, really three, three things. Um, really quick, uh, we haven't really been updating everybody because it's tr difficult trying to figure out when in the service we update everybody with what's going on. We haven't had any members uh, that have uh, been sick with coronavirus or anything such as that. Uh, but one of the things we do want to update you on is Justin Phillips who is back home. He had a little episode the other night where he passed out and had to go to the ER, but he is back home. He's got some, um, some surgeries that are coming up, uh, dealing with amputation and things like that, but he is doing very well. You need to continue to keep him in your prayers as he walks through that, but we're very excited about that and very happy for him and his family. Also, many of you um, donated to uh, to Robert and Karen Akers. And Karen wanted me to share this uh, letter with you. I'll, I'll read it. It says, to our Gateway family, usually when we write a thank you note, it consists of thanking the congregation for prayers, um, food, etc. This is not one of those notes. However, it's a bit more. During our 44 years at Gateway, we have seen this one uh, over so many times, including ourselves. Following Robert's hospital stays and diagnosis of uh, kidney failure, our family jumped in to help us in so many ways um, that were totally unexpected. We were so overwhelmed with knowing the love Gateway has for one another when we found a deposit in our bank account to help us through all of this. So many have run errands, brought food, prayers, cards, etc. So many have offered to take Robert to dialysis since he isn't driving yet. In fact, we were able to fill up a month with no repeats and still more of you have, are on standby while Karen continued to work. Of course, COVID-19 changed all plans since Karen was working from home, but all of you said it said to keep me on the list. These are just a few of the many acts of kindness shown to us. Uh, everything you have sent um, lets us know that you are praying for us. We thank God to be able to worship with all of you. We pray that we here at Gateway 
continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus, not just with the family, but throughout our community and beyond. We love all of you, Robert and Karen Akers. And of course, Robert and Karen, we love you too uh, from the bottom of our hearts. And uh, we miss you guys just as we miss all of you. Again, just a reminder that we have a fun kids video starting here in nine minutes. Uh, there will be a short countdown, and then it is sort of a Blues Clues event live from here uh, in the Gateway Easter Egg Hunt. So it's going to be a lot of fun. God bless you, and happy Easter. <laughs>